Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing uh, a correlation in SPSS. So I have here uh, an SPSS data file, and I'm in the data view, and I have a few variables here. And I'm going to show you uh, what these variables mean, how they're configured, uh, how to run a correlation, and then how to interpret the results of that correlation. So I want to show you in variable view uh, first how these variables are configured. So you have a uh, first a student ID. Now even though it's numeric, so if we look back at the data view, you see that the student ID variable here is 1 through 90. So even though it's numeric, it's actually going to be uh, nominal. Uh, so you have 90 students participating in this uh, study. So this is a this is a fictitious data set that I created, uh, but I want to show you how how this would be configured uh, if it were real, and this would be a nominal uh, unit of measurement. Uh, one particular student uh, is not better than another, so there, it's not ordinal; uh, it's nominal. All the students are equal, and the label here is student ID. And then I have three dependent variables. I'll go back to the data view here, and you can see these are the three dependent variables. Remember, in SPSS, a variable always is displayed in a column, always in a column. So you can see these are numeric, but the unit of analysis is scale. And that's the same for counseling skills, which is one dependent variable, content knowledge, which is another, and supervision skills which is the third dependent variable. So for this particular research design, uh, what we're pretending was done is that you had 90 students that participated uh, in this study, and all, th all 90 were given three assessments. One was designed to measure counseling skills. So these, are, these would be students in a counseling program. Uh, one, was, one was designed to measure counseling skills, one was designed to measure content knowledge, and one supervision skills. Uh, all these assessments were then converted to a T-score, which has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. That's a T-score. So counseling skills would be the actual skills of counseling that a counselor uses in a session. So this would be individual counseling skills and techniques, uh, group facilitation techniques, uh, family therapy, uh, appraisal. These would be counseling skills. Then we have content knowledge. That's more uh, knowledge uh, that, like human development, ethics, uh, research. Uh, knowledge not necessarily uh, tied to a, a counseling skill, knowledge that's important and is needed to be an effective counselor. Uh, but it's more uh, terms and theory as opposed to skills used inside of a session. And then you have supervision skills. So supervision is different than counseling but it's also a skill that's used by a counselor. So that would be another assessment. That's another dependent variable here. So you want to see then how do these three variables relate to each other. So the way, the way to run a correlation uh, in this situation, which would be an appropriate statistic for, for this situation, is you have three dependent variables and, and simply an, a student ID. Uh, you would select Analyze, and go down to Correlate, select Bivariate Correlations. And you can see this one's already configured, so let me move it back to how it appeared by default. So this is what it would look like by default. You'd have this section empty. Uh, Pearson would be checked. The correlation coefficient we most commonly use is the Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient, uh, which is represented here by uh, the word Pearson. Uh, we're interested in any difference between these 
variables, not necessarily uh, a directional difference. So we would select two-tailed or leave it as this selected at two-tailed. And we want to uh, flag significant correlations. This is not necessary, but it's a handy feature included in SPSS, which points out any correlations that uh, do meet uh, statistically significant levels. And then options, we're going to leave this uh, at default, which is means and standard deviations will be displayed in a, uh, uh, in a dialog, uh, in a table rather. So what variables do we want to move over for this analysis? Well, the student ID is simply the ID number of the student. Remember, this is a nominal, uh, this is a nominal level, right? even though it's stored numerically, it's a nominal variable. So I'm going to close out of this and show you, as you can see, in the student ID in the variable view, this is nominal, right? so which would not work in a correlation, uh, nor, nor would it uh, be logical to do that for this situation. So moving back to where we were, we're going to want to move over the, um, again, this returns back to how it is by default, but uh, you'll, you'll want to move over these three dependent variables, counseling skills, content knowledge, and supervision skills. And then uh, click OK. And you have here a couple tables. Uh, the first one uh, shows you the descriptive statistics. So you can see that the, um, the mean for the counseling skills is the lowest of the three means. Uh, the standard deviation for counseling skills is the highest, almost nine. Content knowledge is the highest mean and a standard deviation of almost seven. And the supervision skills uh, is in the middle at 49, almost 50 uh, is the mean score. And then again, almost seven is the standard deviation. So the standard deviations for content knowledge and supervision skills are very close to one another, but the standard deviation for counseling skills is uh, a bit higher. So there's a higher variance uh, in that sample in the, in the uh, scores recorded for counseling skills. So then we have this second table, and this is the uh, correlations table. And this is kind of uh, done in block format, uh, and I'm going to explain how this works. So what this does is it shows you the correlation, uh, the Pearson correlation, for the row and the column, right? So if you look at counseling skills here to the left and you want to see how it correlates with counseling skills, well, clearly that's going to be one. That's going to be a perfect correlation because that's the same variable. So here we see that counseling skills in relation to content knowledge, we have a Pearson's R value of 0.214, which is a small positive correlation. But it, we do see that it, it meets statistical significance, right? It is uh, 0.043, which is below 0.05, so it's 4.3%, and the cutoff is 5%. So we would say here that there is a statistically significant correlation between counseling skills and content knowledge. So the chances that we would s observe this relationship, this Pearson's R value of 0.214 through random error alone is only 4.3%. All right. Now we look at counseling skills and supervision skills. And we see that, again, uh, we have statistical significance, this time uh, even greater. It's 0.28, so it's, a, it's an even greater uh, positive correlation. So this means, again, as uh, counseling skills increase, we would expect supervision skills to, to increase. Now, this doesn't mean there's causality. This just means this is what we would expect to observe, that as one of these scores goes up, the other one goes up as well, so they're positively correlated. Uh, this is a 0 .007, which is significant at the 0 
one level. I mean, it's less than one percent. It's 0.7 uh, percent. So this means it's only a 0.7 percent chance that this correlation of uh, 0.283 occurred by random error alone. So there is a there is a relationship, significant relationship between these two variables. So now the only differences we have not looked at, or the only correlation we have not looked at there, uh, therefore, is the content knowledge as it compares to supervision skills. And here we see that it's 0 0.062. So it's not, uh, not a um, significant correlation. That's a very uh, small uh, value for uh, Pearson's R. All right. And 0 0.56 uh, is definitely not anywhere near significance. That's 56.1%, and the cutoff is 5%. So we would say here there is not a statistically significant correlation between the content knowledge dependent variable and the supervision skills dependent variable. So this block format is actually fairly straightforward. And to identify uh, a certain correlation, you simply uh, find the, de the variable, the dependent variable, uh, on the row, and then look at the column and match up, and it'll, it'll give you the values. So that's how you um, set up and perform a correlation and how you interpret the results. I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, and as always, I want to thank you for watching my video. And if you have any questions, please ask me, and I'll be happy to help you.